So you want to add some HTML audio to your web pages. Well, HTML5 introduced the audio element. We can now add HTML audio tags to any web page and either have them show up with controls or just be hidden on the page. And we can have audio playing on the web page. We can actually control it with JavaScript as well. Now there's not a lot of styling that we can do with them. It, they're kind of like um, form elements in that you can't really control a lot of the things about them. It will vary from one browser to the next. But we can do things, some basic things like width to make it fill up a certain amount of space. We can change it from display inline, which is the default, to display block to change the way it renders on the page a little bit. Or you can hide the audio element and then use HTML and CSS to build your own controls, which if you want a custom player, that's really the way to go. Don't try to waste your time styling the built-in one that the browser provides. So how do we uh, work with this? Well, there is a containing audio element. There's an attribute called controls. Controls will make this show up. It'll make the controls for the audio play or appear. So you can so you can make the audio play. There's a volume control, which typically is just mute control. Uh, inside here, you'll get a download, but these controls, again, will vary a little bit from one browser to the next. We have a muted attribute. If we refresh the page, you can see the audio is muted. The controls are here, but I can't do anything with it. So option, but not that useful. It's better when you get into video to have the muted control. Uh, there is an autoplay attribute, but the autoplay attribute, again, used to work fairly well, um, but as people have come to realize that this is a really annoying thing to have on the page, just audio starting to play and no controls visible on the page, for that reason, they, the browsers mostly don't support this anymore. So the attributes there, but you can't really use it. Now we can add the attribute preload and preload comes up with these three different possible values. None, so don't preload it, don't be ready for when the user wants to do it. Auto, meaning go ahead and try to download the whole thing so it's ready to play. Or metadata, meaning the information about the media file. What's the media type, what's the file name, and so on. All that information, the metadata, can be downloaded. Now, inside the audio control, there is also a source attribute, which you can use to point at a single file. The problem with this is, though, that not all audio formats are supported across all the browsers. And if you go back a few years, uh, it was even more divisive which formats were supported by which browsers. So what they did was they created the audio control. This element would wrap around one or more source elements. So you could create a whole bunch of optional ones inside of here. Now I'm just going to do two as an example. These will have source attributes and they will also have type attributes. The type is the mime type for the file. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add, um, I've got uh, an MP3 and I've got a WAV file version of the same thing. This is what we would use the source elements for. So they're self-closing tags and we just specify that okay an mp3 can be listed as audio slash mpeg or audio slash mp3. Either one will work with the browser and this is an audio slash wave and you can write wave with the E without the E or X hyphen wave. There's a few different ways of writing it. This is probably the most common though. So we have two potential sources. Now what the browser is going to do is it'll look at the first one and say, do I know how to use this kind of file? Yes. All right. I'm going to download that. That's the one I'm going to use. And then it will ignore the rest. 
If the browser doesn't support this, it will move on to the second format and see, is this something I support? If it is, great. If not, then we can add HTML. Like this. So you can add an anchor tag. This piece of HTML right here only appears ever if the HTML audio element is not supported. So if this is not supported by the browser, then this is what you will see. And we can actually add the download attribute to the anchor tag so that if the link is there, you click on it, it automatically prompts the, the uh, browser to download the file instead of opening it up in a new tab or something like that. All right, so we refresh this. There we are. We have a 10 second long file. All right, so we won't talk about Fight Club. That's it. That's all there is to the HTML uh, audio element in terms of the source and the loading and the fallback content. Uh, there are a couple of other attributes that we can put in here. Uh, something that you can add to images and videos and, and uh, audio files. Cross origin. We can set this to anonymous. And if it's anonymous, then when the request for the file for these files is sent, uh, no identifying information, no cookies or basic authentication headers or anything like that gets sent off with it. Or if you want, you can change this to use credentials. And that's only if these files right here, if they're coming from a different domain than the one that the HTML file came from. If it's from the same uh, domain, then this attribute gets ignored completely. It doesn't do a thing. And we also have a loop attribute. This is the one that tells the audio file if it's supposed to um, loop. So when we get to the end of the file, there we go. So it started over again. And that's what the loop attribute will do. All right. So hopefully that's uh, enough to get you going, working with audio in your web pages, putting it inside there. I will be doing another video about video specifically, and I'll be doing another video about scripting with audio and video. So watch for those videos. If you have any questions, leave them in the bottom uh, in the comment section. Um, if you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.